kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> what better time to press the button? Welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. It's the Wednesday show. Hello. The math of it all. Oh, where do we do it? In here? That would be so <laughs> very great. Hi, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. There hello. was our favorite head. She's over here. <laughs> She's over here. This is where she My is. Hand. There we go. Hi, right, welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. Hello, hello. Oh, my goodness. Seems like it's been forever since we've been here in the late night play set. Hello, everybody else. Welcome back. Let us bring it in here. Very nice. Hi, everybody at home. Oh, we're already zoomed in. Beautiful. Okay. Today, is, welcome back. Today is Wednesday, August 28th, 2019. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans. And welcome back to the late night play set. This is a Steiner show. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we haven't decided whether to dump that yet or not because the pencils still say it's tonight's show. I'm going to get new pencils? That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Ryan, so much stuff to cover. Um, good stuff, bad stuff, all sorts of stuff. How are you doing? Let's start there. What's happening I'm, with you? Uh, my legs, my body doesn't work really well, yeah. so I'm maintaining a positive attitude which, like I always do. <laughs> which, if my math uh, is correct, that means that you're mentally very uh, sound and with it because your body's shut off. Yeah. It seems to be one or the other with the MS. It's like you wake up and you can you can operate one system, but not both. Sometimes it takes to figure out which one mm -hmm. is operational. <laughs> oh, you don't get to choose. No. Oh, that I don't know if that's clear to everybody else. Oh, no, I don't always know which ones I get. It's a that's grab a, bag every a shit, morning. Shit crap shoot, I'll tell you that. It's a shit grab bag. <laughs> <laughs> it is a shit grab bag. But I uh, don't need to walk as much as I think I need to sometimes, so okay. it all works out. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes before the show, like I did today, sometimes I'll take a couple laps around here. I don't know if you're able to do that or not, but it definitely helps me. Without, You know what I mean? You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to put the stress mind of, I've got to go to the store, talk to people, walk in public, anything like that. You can almost just do laps here. That's a great idea for some days. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We should probably pick up last week. Uh, we went to Breakfast Club last week. That's where we, where we left you on Thursday. We were going to Breakfast Club on Friday. Uh, we gathered a lot of Porsches on the way. We had a fantastic drive up there. And then when we got there, Newcombs was wah, wah, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Newcombs went, ah. Newcombs was closed. Um, but that's okay. We still had a great time in their parking lot. I it have a little a, video to play in just a few minutes. I would love to see that. It was yeah. a nice morning. It, it was. We had a great time, even even though we didn't have food and coffee. Uh, still had a drive. Still had all our, all our camaraderie. And and there was over. T we counted over twenty five Porsches by the time we left. And that was after people had already posted that they were closed and stuff. So I think it would have been a really big day. Uh, so that was Breakfast Club. Uh, we did a nice uh, Malibu and Muffins on Saturday, which Thank was you. very, very enjoyable. Yes, it was. I'm trying to think. I don't think we, we didn't go with anybody, but then we just collected people along the way like usual. Yeah. Yeah. But it was still very enjoyable. And uh, Cars and Coffee Los Angeles. Cars and Coffee Los Angeles on Sunday. Sorry we didn't make it, guys. We intended to. Had every intention. Mrs. Ryan was uh, having one of those days where it just... Stuff wasn't working, and we decided it's Sunday. Why are we going to push this? It's crazy. So even though it was right around the corner, uh, we'll see you guys next month. It's just one of those things. Hi, guys. Hap happens sometimes. No I love deal. that one. I'll see, we'll see you soon. And then uh, some not great news came in over the wire this morning of uh, uh, somebody we used to know from the Mythbusters days and somebody that the rest of the you probably know from car shows and from Discovery, from Velocity, and all the channels. Um, show host and gosh i don't even know what to daredevil gosh she was just a really really neat person jesse combs passed away uh trying to break her own land speed record yesterday oh that's awesome. yeah and uh, she's come up on the show recently a couple times because uh she was a mutual friend with uh jonathan bucko buckley who who we met up at newcomb ranch yeah, yeah, yeah. She, they used to host a show together in australia and uh, and she's just been coming up a lot, so it's one of those things. And so I thought she was coming up a lot because we were going to get to see her again soon or something like that. You know, yeah, we hung same. out with her at Comic Con and, and and conventions and stuff. And just Godspeed, Jesse. We love you, and uh, a lot of people do. I'll tell you what, social is blowing up today with the news. So you know, a lot of people love you out there. Lots of yeah. I wasn't sure what that was all about. I'm glad you told us. All right, now that uh, we can uh, energetically turn things around here a little bit, Mrs. Ryan, I would like to play the video that I just brought uh, brought up a few minutes ago of Breakfast Club. Yeah. From last Friday. 
Mm, it's pretty short because <laughs> <There wasn't laughs> the, the whole day was pretty short. <laughs> but let's check it out and see what happened. Roll it, Hal. like we've got a fridge situation. Usually there's a pot of coffee or something. A lot of people. There's another one showing up. still laughing at what Kevin said. Do you happen to recall what Kevin, K- KM, Ye, Jesus, Kevin said there? Do you remember? Not exactly. I, this sentiment was like... We were watching a GT2 RS, which is the yeah, everybody on our know. A big fancy one. A uh, big fancy Porsche. And uh, he was like, but that guy was at Sunset GT. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Inside jokes. Uh, I love right. our guys. Mrs. Ryan, I have some East Coast feeds to do. It was the Casman's birthday down there in Palm Beach. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to get through all of them. We should break them up for today and tomorrow, but uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll call this one on the fly. Let's start with the East Coast feed. I believe this is on the way to Florida. Uncle Mike's for the birthday weekend. Roll it out. It's, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, you see Brooke checking herself out. You know, that's how she does it. East Coast Speed coming to you live from Westchester Airport. You know why? Because the birthday weekend begins today. That's what happens. Because you know why my birthday? Last whole goddamn month long. Anyway. Yes, he does. See, even that guy knows. Look at her shirt. Bam. Exactly. See, he knows. There it is. That's how we roll. Westchester Airport. We're heading out to Uncle Mike's. Brooke will eventually talk in one of these. Not just other people. It's good. Say hi to Jane and Nicole, babe. There you go. Love you guys. I mean, all right. All right. I, I, I don't know. I have nothing. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, Brooke and the Casman, East Coast Speed, coming to you live from Florida. Florida, Boynton Beach, Uncle Mike's house. Technically, more technical than that is we're actually at Sonic because every time I come for my birthday, my first breakfast has to be Sonic, just like, you know, White Castle or she needs an out burger. Me personally, Jack in the Box of the Dollar Tacos. You can't go wrong. Hey guys, did you know it's his birthday? Did I mention it was my birthday yet? Oh, wait, it's not yet. It's the month of August, but we're getting there. Um, we'll send you some more love from the pool in a little bit because I'm going to eat my Sonic right by the pool. The beverages are already going. Love you guys. Oh, by the way, it's noon and we just woke up. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I know. Uh, all right, let's do one more and see where they're at. Oh, uh, right. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, what do you do first thing in the morning when you're awake in West Palm Beach around 8 a.m. and it's your birthday week? Let me show you real quick. Maybe you guys will know what this is. We're pressing the button, Mr. Ah. And Mrs. Ryan. Look, there's Brooke, and she already has a drink for me. This is fantastic. But in the background, you can hear the good stuff coming. Here it is. There he is. Boom. You guys, catching up with you guys. What way to spend a good morning with a little alcoholic beverage for the birthday week? And there it is. 
A little, it's a late night play set. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Love Happy that birthday. Kaz, man. Man. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do one more because I think this is connected to that, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. Ready? Yeah. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, what do you do first thing in the morning when you're no, awake? No, no, uh, it's so connected. <laughs> Hang on. Mr. Oh, the whole Ryan. system is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Woo. Back to the studio. Holy smokes. All right. Boy, they look, you could tell they look the same. This is why we need a crew. All right. Ready. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> you know. We didn't know it was you calling. It said restricted. I wasn't even looking near my phone. Uncle Mike was like, yo, you got a restricted phone call. I'm like, I hate anything right now. It's my birthday. But if you guys didn't know it's his birthday. If you didn't know it's my birthday, still, um, the feeds will keep coming from our antics and shenanigans while we listen to It's a Late Night Play Set. It's a high brook. <laughs> no, she's supposed to say hi, brook. This is not the Say hi, brook. There we go. Love you guys. It's turning into a, it's a small world. It's a late night place. Yet. Holy smokes. Oh, my uh-uh. goodness gracious. All right, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> I think we'll save the rest for tomorrow. Uh, more birthday weekend in more Florida birthday tomorrow. More birthday weekend. Yeah, yeah. A couple more. A couple more birthday weekend tomorrow. And, uh, and then they check in from someplace else as well. All right, so we'll do that tomorrow. Mrs. Ryan, it's time to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? I'll just situate myself. You look lovely. Your outfit looks lovely. Look at you. Get your shirt and your shoes are all color matched there with the Hunziger McQueen stuff. Yeah, it all worked out. Very nice. There is. We're not political, of course, on the show for sure. And there is an entertainment show called Veep. And we all know that one. Yeah, Julia Louis Dreyfus, right? Yes. HBO, sure. Uh, so, in lieu of being political, uh, <laughs> there is a hotel in DC that has outfitted a room that's like her brownstone and also put the Oval Office on the 12th floor. Oh, okay. So this is some sort of VEEP hotel experience in Washington. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can. I mean, I love these pop ups. They're doing one in New York with the Seinfeld experience mm-hmm. and stuff where you get to like go around the Seinfeld set and buy dvds and shit <laughs> cool. yeah there's uh, props and stuff yeah. from the show there. i mean when i was a kid this is the stuff that we used to do you know we used to and we, i feel like we kind of started all this these experiences based on the tv shows and, yeah. yeah i mean we made them very I mean, we're personal. doing one right now isn't this yeah. not it this is exa- this is this is one right now mm-hmm. yeah it's the new rage diorama. all the rage so stay at that hotel if you go to dc it's i guess fine. oh it's at the hamilton hotel we never actually even finished that show it's off the air now we never even finished it we got we we're like a season or two behind yeah there's we should go back to that that would be great. Yeah. Um, okay. There's this 16 year old Swedish activist named Greta Thunberg. Mm. Uh, she arrived in New York uh, from London, from England, uh, via a, a yacht that runs on solar power. Her whole point was to be carbon neutral or zero carbon emissions or something, because she's all about environmental activism. Okay. She's only 16. Uh, But uh, she's in the States for uh, a global conference with the UN about it. So that was her way to bring some attention to different ways to travel. Neat. And showing that it's possible. Yeah. It's not just a concept. Yeah. And she's a proved concept. She arrived safely at 16 years old. Proved concept. Yeah. It's people are 16. So people are 16. Good point. I didn't say that right. <laughs> Activists are younger and they're paying awesome. more attention. They're being more astute. So pay attention. There's different <laughs> ways to do stuff. Uh, geez, Louise. Uh, there was, I don't know if you know about this, but there was this enormous 26 pound cat. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, I didn't read. Yeah. I saw there was a big 26 pound cat. He's two years old. He was a rescue in Philadelphia. <laughs> I didn't realize he was so young. I know. I did, I was Not like even fully grown. He's got to be old, Growing right? Boy, yeah. He's like two, and he's so big. I but he was adopted, and he's in Philadelphia near a shelter, and he was finally adopted like this week. From what I saw from the photo, it was a very large cat, not just a 
very overweight uh, obese cat. I mean, it was like a, this was a large animal. It literally, the person holding it hugged it and it like. You know what I'm saying though, right? Proportionally, it was a large cat, almost like a wild cat versus just a really Morris, the really overweight house cat. (laughs) Right. It was not just chubby house cat. Eating lasagna all day. Yeah. So it got adopted. His name, Mr. B is his name. Mr. B? Mr. B. The letter B. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. He got adopted. So uh, they're still going to update Mr. B. on Instagram and keep that going. Oh, good. So if you want to pay attention, go to town. Uh, there is an 80-year-old man in Texas who retired, uh, and he lives on like a three-acre lot uh, where people would just drop off strays often. And so his Stray thing- what? We're still on like cats? dogs and oh, dogs and stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, but he was at first like, I don't know what to do. So he, his, him and his family would take these animals to the vets or whatever if they, when they could. Uh, but he retired and was like, uh, I'll just figure out a way to transport them and let them do stuff. So he made a train out of a tractor and <laughs> made carts for up to eight dogs at a time. And he travels them around. There's a golf course and stuff. What? That's yeah. amazing. Like 90 Let minutes a, a day. Video of that. Yeah, it, there's a great video. I'll send it to you. That's amazing. Uh, it's super neat. So there's always fun. It, it kind of, I guess the theme is there's always ways around stuff you think you can't do. And Ooh, he was like, like I, I'll figure it out. And he did. And it's adorable. You're adorable. Oh, and that's bit. <laughs> it got stuck. <laughs> is, your, is your belt broken? <laughs> And that's been what's going on. Good job, Mrs. Ryan. Push all the buttons, right? Yeah, I think almost. Almost. Too many buttons. So much stuff. All right, is that everything? That's it. We're done. All right, thank goodness. Day of watch. Oh, gee whiz. Good grief. Last thing, last thing before we get our guest in here, who I neglected to tell you about as well. We're out of practice today, Mrs. Ryan. We'll talk all about her in just one second as well. Uh, today is the 28th. Is that correct? Is that what I yes. said before? Yes. August 28th. So that gets an X to denote that Dave is not sitting here uh, today, although we still are riding high on the very good news for the progress from last week. Mrs. Ryan, is there anything new this week? No, not yet. <laughs> Fair enough. That's all right. No problem. Still excited about the fact that we are being taken a look at. Taken. We are having a look taken. Oh, hey. <laughs> Help me here. Well, having a look taken at us by the people that look at people. Okay. In that case, Mrs. Ryan, it's time to talk about Lisa Alvarado. Would you be a comedian first? Can I show you a comedian, actor, writer? Would it what would it, what would you be? How would I, what, I should have asked you this ahead of time. How would you bill yourself if you were billing yourself? Do you bill yourself? Comic, yeah. yeah, stand-up comic. Beautiful. Like I was going to say, stand-up comic Lisa Alvarado will be in here in just two seconds. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get here and find out everything she's up to as well as the documentary that she is directing and all of this stuff. More right after this. Someone do that. 
I'm really? Like, really? On something. Oh, uh, my but goodness. But I think he was doing it as a joke because he brought a gold one. Oh. You know, it was like this big, like, so I'm going to bring my own, own cock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, in that case, we're sitting here with Lisa Alvarado. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hey. Thanks so much for being here today. <laughs> yeah, it's so good to be here. I asked Lisa before the show, I said, do you have any idea what you're in for, knowing that you hadn't seen the show or having been able to tell from your face that you hadn't seen the show? No, I haven't. And she's like, no. I'm like, why the hell would, why? who asks that before? <laughs> no, I'm cute. I don't have to do homework. I don't know if you guys ah! know that. I don't. It's like is that what like, the rule is? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, you are cute. You look fantastic there. Let me frame up your Thanks. shot. Frame me up. Yeah. <laughs> Where you want to be? Yeah, yeah. Right there. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Now that you see what you're in for today, or now that you see what you're doing and everything, yes. um, you're doing panel. Have you ever done panel on a talk show before? Yeah. What show? Oh, what shows? like a... Uh, the, the most organic one, which would be Byron Allen's Comics Unleashed. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, yeah. So definitely lead in to any bit at any point in the middle and make sure it's a non sequitur. So. <laughs> Is that how those things are worked? That's because Byron of how Allen. They're yeah, sure. just, yeah, that's exactly. It's just the style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, you go to the airport. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you get groceries? <laughs> that is. So, he just sort of so points over just, here. Yeah. But yeah. that's all. I it's, assume that's all set up material. Um, yeah, like insanely <laughs> scripted, right? Insane. It's too scripted. Yeah. I mean, when you get a room of comics, you just need them to talk. Because right. they're just naturally funny people. But it's just those, yeah. those lead-ins are, <laughs> who wrote that? You did? Okay. You write the checks, right? Okay. All right. But he does. He does write the <laughs> but checks. But he really does. Very well. I know Good that. job, Byron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are we to say? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, Byron Allen, any other ones? Um, I'm sure. Forgive me for poking I, I around with that. I did for um, TV Guide Network, and then I did a, some mom's one that was a long time ago with, like, Shaq, sex wife, and like a bunch of. Oh my god! You, you do a bunch of these, and they, they you don't know where they end up all the time. Sometimes they're pilot episodes, and sometimes they're never seen. Yeah, right. and I have terrible memory, you guys. So I won't even remember you guys after the Same. end of this. What's I'm the like, reason What's for your that? name? Yeah. <laughs> do you have it? Just a bad memory. Always have. I. You know what? I don't know. We're my too much. My parents have really bad memory, and of course they're older, but. I just, I have always had it, and it's progressively getting worse. It's really scary. Really? Like, because when I go up on stage, I have to take a set list. I just used to take one all the time. I would put it on my phone and just, like, lay it on the thing. But if I have a new bit I'm working on, I'm not even going to get to it. Or if I memorize the bit, none of the rest of my jokes are, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Do you think that's you and age, or do you think that that's uh, part of uh, life these days? Because I find that we're all in this so much that the real life is getting more fragmented than it used uh, to be. Thanks for the age comment. I did remember that. Um, but No, yeah. you said it. You said <laughs> it. Did you see? No, I just... <laughs> Wait a no, second. I just want to make you feel uncomfortable on your own show. Come on. This is, we're like family now, time Lisa Alvarado was on and I told her how old she was. That was awesome. <laughs> I just like making men squirm. It's my yeah, thing. Nailed it. Nailed I, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I really don't know. I don't know if it's like a, a part of your brain that just isn't. You know what I'm saying though, right? Like, like these, a chemical. These days, I think that we're all a little uh uh, fragmented. Scatter yeah, brain. scattered yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just too much overstimulation. And there used to be more real world and just a little bit of this virtual world. Now there's like a shit ton of this virtual world yeah. and not so much of this real world. And I think our brains are like going. Yeah, and I'm so much better. What am I supposed to remember? Yeah. Does the I, machine I bet I remember this part or do I'm, I remember it? Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I'm bad at names. I, I can pretty much remember faces uh, really well, but the names, names of streets, na you know, like even my own bits, I'm like, I know what I want to talk about but actually I'll write it out in joke format but I'm like then I get up there and I'm <laughs> <laughs> like last night I did a show last night and I was like okay I'm gonna do this one like I just wrote this new joke um and it's controversial and it was an all-white audience and I'm like I'm gonna attack it this way because <laughs> their their demographic is different than this audience so I'm gonna do it this way just totally <laughs> like was like blah Ah oh, man! <laughs> Nothing. Was it the room or was it your but math? I, was your math off? I think, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not good at math, but um. Yeah, I'm, your joke. I meant how you had <laughs> oh, what that you thought too. was new and how it was going to work. Oh, oh, not decimals and stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think that working parts is that better? <laughs> working pieces. Okay. Working pieces. Sure. Such a dude. Like, do we need to put up a shelf? I'm. 
<laughs> so it's an all white audience, and I'm working on this new ethnic bit, and um, and it it just. I, I I slid it in there and I just knew it was going to be super tense because I feel like in white audiences, they, you know, being Latina, I can talk about race a little bit more, but this white Your audience is was Latina. just like, you don't look Latina. So do you I sell it? You don't really I sell. I do. It's not like, I don't I know, know. When Melissa Villanueva stands on stage, you go, oh, okay, well, she's probably, so she can probably, but I don't know if you get that free pass because Sometimes, you don't necessarily yeah. look it. Well, when I'm in all... Uh, Latino audiences they think I'm a white girl and the funny thing is both of my parents were born in Peru and their parents were born in Peru I'm first generation so, so I'm actually more like Peruvian. more Latina yeah, Latina. yeah. yeah. I'm a more Pure Latina bread. than they are they're like third generation in the United States you know like they've been, they don't even know what buenos dias means they don't they're like what's going on what's cerveza what is that um so it's it's weird because it because of my appearance. But if you went to my family's house, it's just all Latino. I mean, and um, but you bring that and you know it. Yeah. Do you bring that on stage and then they then then that's how they know it? I always just by talk walking about on stage. It. Oh, pretty girl. I don't know. I don't know what you are until you start telling me what you are. Right. Um, I I almost always talk about being Latina because uh, I think it's important and I'm I'm proud of my heritage and I. Um, I always talk about I, all my material is very personal. Anyway, Great. it's always it's always That's my the best, stuff. the best kind. Yeah, yeah. I really, I mean, I can't I can't remember anything food. else. So right, right. Oh, right. <laughs> I can remember my own life usually. <laughs> So yeah, I do this, the stuff that I feel passionate about, that's what I'm going to talk about. So the race stuff I love talking about. So how did, the, what was this? I, I don't, I'm not asking you to burn it right here unless you want to. What? what no, you what? guys can help me work it out. It's, um, I, I just, you know how things are just so tense in America right now. And yeah. obviously in the Latino world, things are very tense there with the whole border and all, you know, it's just. A lot of people so, walking around not sure if they're going to be able to keep walking around. Exactly. Yeah. And my and my family's like been affected by this like f- firsthand not you know the b- at the border but my parents it took them forever to get their citizenship and everything. So I married them. And um <laughs> That's one of them, but that's a that's Is that true? Movie. Yeah, no. Yeah, I married them. <laughs> well, not then. I didn't know that they didn't have to be married no, to have you. No, no, I. <laughs> you married the <laughs> union. No, I married them so they could become legal. Right. And um, yeah, I'm kidding. And so no, no the bit the bit is, um, how do I start it off? Oh, I, I I just make the simple statement that. <laughs> That I, you got it now. You, no, you I'm rolled around. I'm laughing at you, thinking inside. Man, your stupidity is bogging down my bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me with math. Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the bit is that I actually like. I hate when people judge others by just the color of their skin. I hate that. I mean, what about the texture? That's good. What's wrong with that? There are so many different. I mean, if we come together and just focus on texture, we could hate so many more people. We could hate and more people. Yes. Oh my goodness. I, and so it depends on the word I I, I say. And, and then I go into this whole thing about how I just don't trust shiny people. I mean, they just, the, the whole- shiny people, those are the ones that we need to rally against. I mean, they're over moisturized. They're dewy. They have supple skin. Those are the ones that we can't, that we need to build a wall for them because, you <laughs> And know. you are then shining a flashlight on the ridiculousness that we're exactly. judging anyone for any of these exactly. silly Exactly, but once I make the statement up front, it takes them a minute because they go, oh, she's talking about racism, she's talking about color, I'm uncomfortable. And sometimes they don't, they get too tight before you even get to the punchline. And then... When I'm using words like hate, it's because I'm making fun of how could you, that's how stupid it is that you're hating someone because of their color, that I'm referring to it as texture. And this is how dumb you are even now because (laughs) shininess is not a texture. And I just made you all believe that it's a texture. It's not a texture. I don't know math, but I know that. <laughs> so I did this in an all-white room just last night, and I just wrote this joke I'm um, like three or four weeks ago. So I've only done it like three times on stage. And every time, because of my memory, I'll do it different. And so I'm like, let's go this way. Let's go. Oh, that worked. Oh, that didn't work so well. And so I guess if I, if I do it on stage enough consecutive nights in a row, then I kind of find that rhythm, and I know where the punches are. But... I'm kind of an improv comic where I'm constantly changing the yeah, jokes. Like 
it's good and bad. For TV, it's terrible <laughs> because they want to see your set, your five minute. Yes, but I don't night. like comedy on television. <sighs> it's not good. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I I did um oh so I did the it's Harry comedy Connick, for the masses and it's the Harry Connick Jr. show. And oh, sorry, the, he's in, a nice one. I like him. Is he? He got canceled. So um. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like it. I don't know. Yeah, no, he's, the guy himself. He's, I used okay, to like the guy. he was interviewing me and almost falling asleep, which was hysterical. I was like, "Why was he hosting that show?" Why? I turned on the TV today. Jerry O'Connell has a show. Jerry like, O'Connell, it, Mrs. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, what? Whatever, you know, Rebecca he's got a show. There, thank you very much. He's got a oh, show. Geez. Are they still married? I don't I think, think so. Uh, oh. Yeah, probably not. Well, That's why he needs a show. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, why they gave him a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I cut you off there. It's no, but it's it's just I mean, you know they go too. over your set, and then they just go, nope, you can't say this. I remember one time I I'd written a joke, which this is the truth. I booked a national commercial for a cancer medication. That was like my big. I was like, what is going on with my career? I'm the cancer girl. I'm the poster for that. Yeah. That's where I'm at now. So You're fixing it though, at least not they, supporting but, it. That's nice. <laughs> right, I guess, but um, am I? Do I look like it? I don't. You know, do I? Because you look so good. Yes, you I must have survived. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. Or maybe us, I'm just. I'm in rem- this is remission, like. everybody. What's up? You're great. Um, it's so. <laughs> They wouldn't let me say the word cancer. It was what? too, and I was like, yeah, but I'm not making fun of it. I'm just telling a true story that I was booked for a commercial. It was, they thought it was too, like too much of a downer. And I go, well, you want me to get to the punchline first? So <laughs> let just mm. listen. And they're like, no. So I had to change it to arthritis. That's so really weird. It That's was an weird. arthritis commercial, right? Isn't that crazy? Do you remember the uh, the the Jerry Seinfeld Orny Adams uh, documentary yeah, yeah. comedian? Mm-hmm, there was something yeah. like that, and I can't remember the show. I think it might have been Letterman, ironically, but yeah. I think it was whatever the show was. He had to change something. It was very similar, yeah. and it was like he, his word was psoriasis, was it and he had lupus? to change it yeah, to yeah. lupus. I think yeah. is what it was exactly yeah. mm-hmm. for the same exact reason. Why? Yeah. I don't it's, know. Psoriasis. I don't know. Maybe they've got a sponsor who, you know, competing psoriasis medication. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. It, and who determines what's just BS and P. I can answer that. BS and P. Standard yes. broadcast standards and practices. Uh, yeah. Career in television, man. I did not care for that part. Faxing off whatever you're going to do to these people, so they can judge and then decide whether or not you have the ability to do such a thing. Yeah, yeah there's whether a you lot can of pull it tape. off. It's like it's a weird prejudgment from somebody who has no qualifications to judge. <laughs> oh this man. Stuff. Yeah, except for the like the job title that's that's it it's the name on the door yeah. and the paycheck and then that guy's fired the next week <laughs> right. yeah it's every time <laughs> I don't like that. all right so let's get about you what 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 got you into comedy what kind of child were you like where did you grow up find out a little of that stuff um i feel like most comics start comedy because i have a really shitty father so yeah. um. but it's always <laughs> the pa- to, uh, upbringing. Sure. yeah it's uh i mean i think if you ask like I would say 90% of comics are like, yeah, my dad never hugged me. <laughs> my are dad you? did, but it was more with, <laughs> you know, punches. And um, no, he w- he was an alcoholic. Come on, guys. That's too easy. Um, <laughs> so I, my parents, you know, it was a really hard upbringing. And I grew up with three brothers, so I was already a tomboy. And Where were you in that? I was second youngest. So okay. What part of the country are we? Uh, Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and my brothers were wrestlers and big guys. And so I was always getting picked on, always. And um, my hair was as short as yours. And I had braces on. And I was a total jock. Like, I was a dude for until uh, until I got pregnant. I found (laughs) (laughs) out as a teenager, I'm like, oh, What grade was that? (laughs) I'm ovulating, guys. It was in high school. Come on. I mean, I'm a late bloomer. Let's be real. Um, And so (laughs) I always had to fight with my words always had to protect myself because I wasn't strong enough against these guys. So I would just always be a smart ass. I just always would, you know, they'd have me in a headlock and I'm like, hey, your dick is this way, you know? (laughs) And so I just, I always loved the, the, you always have the power. When you can outwit somebody, it's, it's unbelievable. And um, I've always loved comedy. <laughs> I'm more. I got nothing. What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is this is the honest to God truth. I saw um, uh, my whole family was watching Bill Cosby um, on VHS, and I saw him, and I was like, "That that's what I want to do." 
that's what I want to do. What, and that, what were you? What, we used to watch them on NBC. What were you watching them on? We VH, were watching. Or was it an old comedy um, special? The, yeah, it was the comedy oh, special. Bill, Bill Cosby himself. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, and that cemented that was it a, for you. That was, that was when I. Deal. Well, here's the reason. It's because when I was watching it with my family, I was in the back of the room, and everybody was in front of me. And for the first time, like no one was screaming or yelling or hurting one another Brought nothing yes everybody was laughing i looked at my mom and dad they looked like a married couple it was just like it was like it, the picture out of the saturday evening yes and i happened. was like yeah. oh my gosh a it's comedian magic. can do that even if you can do it for an hour i'm like i'm i'm gonna do that you know and that was the carson tonight show for me that brought everybody everyone shut the hell up and yeah like we're gonna watch johnny and whatever's on and whoever's on and that became the most important thing not oh. whatever the yeah, exactly. It's like it's, it was so healing, and it just takes you to this like fantasy land of no problems. Beautiful. And this is yes, I love what you're saying. Yeah, more, more. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <Lord. laughs> Can I get a Kleenex? Yeah, yeah. Guys, we I'm using this. my mic. It's a mice real talk work. show. We're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> And then when he started touching women, that's when I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's when I left the room. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm shooting something at my house. And, um, and because my friends, a lot of my friends know that that was like how I started. Someone got me for Christmas years ago, a Bill Cosby no. book. <laughs> and so I'm shooting something at my house in the book is like behind me on the shelf like his face is right behind. and I didn't know because I wouldn't check the area or anything for and I'm like oh edit that out can it can it cover his face because yeah. now it's just horrifying all it I put a mustache on Woody Allen over here <laughs> <laughs> for the same reason nice that's sweet I love it for the same reason because I love the piece of art very mm -hmm. much so and it really has nothing to do with whatever he may or may not have done. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, that's. But uh, I certainly feel your pain on that one. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, that's it, it's it's the healing power of comedy. There's nothing else like it. I just really don't think there's anything else. This may be a good time to segue to your documentary, mm -hmm. since the, the whole comedy and tragedy element. Yes. Um, what can you tell us about uh, the project you're working on? So the documentary is called Don't Wait, the Michael Schmidt story. And um, it's about a, it's about a. It sounds like an after school uh, special. I know. <laughs> don't, don't, wait don't wait, the Michael Schmidt story. Just say no to a band. Seriously. Um, <laughs> when you leave him, the Wendy Lee story. <laughs> it's from Studio 60 as well. Yeah. So this, the, I, it, he basically, he started off as a comedy fan. I didn't really know him. I met him probably three years ago now after a show in san diego um i was headlining and then wait you know, what this guy was a fan of yours at a show i know can you believe i have that's those not that, that, is that is not that what, is what i'm insane. saying that is People not what i'm come saying back. you have turned this they around they wear man. earplugs <laughs> but they come to my show they're like what is she gonna say because she forgets everything my point being this is an interesting way to start <laughs> yeah. this story what <laughs> no Right, you just go ahead and I'll be I'll be amazed over here. No, you go yeah, you're doing really good. Um <laughs> give him shit. Um so anyway, he was By the way, they love it when you give me shit. They oh, love it so oh, much more okay, when you yay. give me shit. I don't care America for it, but they loves love it. it. Yes, they okay, it. so I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, unfortunately, Michael. I handle all the bookings. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you muting no, me I right now? None of the bookings. <laughs> the mute is a problem. <laughs> She's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Big captions. I suck dick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm still single. So, <laughs> so Michael was this is a great guy that came up to me after he waited till the everybody had cleared out. He was just sitting there in his wheelchair and was his like, his wheelchair. Boy, you're. Yeah. What do you want me to say? This is my story, Mister. Back the fuck up. Um. So anyway, he was sitting. No, he was standing in his did wheelchair. You know he was in a wheelchair? Guys. Did you yeah. know he was in a wheelchair? I mean, okay. It's, I certainly that's didn't know what he the would. story is. It has some ups and downs. I'm going as I remember. So he was standing in his wheelchair. Yeah, like he was standing that. in his wheelchair. He was doing a cartwheel. Now let me continue. Um. <laughs> he was he was there at the end of the show and was like I just had to meet you I've been a big fan and um, I've always wanted to try stand-up comedy and he's super charismatic and funny and sweet and like I'm like you have to do it that's great do, do, do it you should try it 
And then um, at the ADA clubs, obviously. Yeah, I mean, he should. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'm like, he's a prop comic because with the wheelchair. You know obviously. what I'm saying? That's not. That's not fair. Um, Wheel it on down. I <laughs> know he could stand. He just. Oh. But um, no. Baker, what's happening? Only on the chair. We're oh. we're weird. We, we are. Um, so anyway, he. Um, said that he wanted to do it I said you should and then that was it I didn't hear from him like social media we would email back and forth every once in a while how many followers did he have on the social media um I don't know just me I think just you (laughs) (laughs) probably probably me I'm really big fan. I don't know who was stalking who, really. Oh, um, so good. You are great. I see why you have fans. <laughs> Improv. I won't remember any of this as soon as I walk out. But Luckily, we're recording most of it. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know I don't watch stuff. That's right. <laughs> Crazy she doesn't need I don't to. even watch myself. <laughs> That's the worst. Um, so then we kept in touch social media a little bit, and then he contacted me and was like, I really need to talk to you. Um, I'm dying and I would love to do stand-up comedy before I die. And, and I, I was like, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. And you're like, that's pretty funny. I could help you work it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, death is the funniest. Yes. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, and so he, the crazy thing is I had just left a show that I was writing on and I was like trying to figure out what do I want to do in life? What do I felt like I had learned what I was going to learn there and, uh, it was like a toxic environment, so I just needed to leave. And then I was like free floating. You're talking about the show you left. Yeah, okay. the show I left. And um, and then I was like, what? What? I, I was praying. I was like, just I need someone I can help or serve or because you know when you get into depression, it's all about you and woe is my life and you know. Um, why am I so broken? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, why am I hosting this show? And um, <laughs> I don't know why do I keep ripping on him. It's so easy. So I, uh, that was like an answered prayer. The fact that he called me and said, can you help me do this? And I was like, of course. But when someone says that they're terminal, you automatically just assume, at least I did, oh, they got six months, a year, year and a half. Maybe he was just diagnosed. But he had just weeks to live. Oh, and that's uh, all. Yeah, that's all. Uh, he had PLS, which I didn't even know what that was. It's primary lateral sclerosis, which is very similar to ALS. Wow. <clears throat> it's basically, uh, it's a little bit longer version. It just is slower. You, um, uh, you sclerosis people are. Yeah. You yeah. We're a nightmare. You do, not, a... you do not have it uh, easy. Yeah. No. And, and I, I, it's, it's similar. Like you don't know. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm still learning about it, but you don't n- the progression is different in everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they, he went undiagnosed. He had this since he was 19 years old. He started with um, like tripping and falling and Clum- general and clumsiness. Yes. Yeah. And it started in his legs. Especially and then at he, that age. Oh, you'll grow out of it. So they don't treat yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were like, oh, he's they're just like, oh, it's a sports injury and blah, yeah, blah, or blah. Or puberty or you're just an awkward teenager. Like, exactly. It's a weird time. Exactly. And then it just got worse. And he, he went to like he went to different countries to try and get diagnosed no one could diagnose him Mm. because it it wasn't progressing fast like als so pls is it's less common um and you can survive with it for many years like he was treatment or it just depends on the case uh no because there's no real treatment he had um i think neurologists had sent him in for like uh, muscle therapy and different things that would help strengthen it but there's nothing that can cure it so it's kind of, it sounds very similar where it's very, almost comes with, uh, down to just making someone comfortable and re- taking away pain and right. trying to make things as easy yeah. as possible. Yeah. Sim- similar? Um, was I, he in pain probably? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Awful. Especially because awful. he was becoming, at that time, he was becoming a quadriplegic. So he was losing all of his um, upper body uh, movement as well, but he had some, and some days would be good. Mm. And as you know, some days are really bad where you have a lot of pain and you just can't move this hand. But right. then the but next he still day, had his faculties. Oh yeah, That's and he's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. He's so smart. That's the and weirdest so funny. part. And then with with this, um, it progresses to the tongue. So he it was affects at the speech point, ALS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a so colleague it, that has it that. would have eventually affected it was already starting to affect his speech so he wanted to do this before he lost before it was a problem yeah his voice but he chose he chose to um have death with dignity but i didn't know that until after i started working with him 
he was pretty smart to wrangle me in and be like, come on, we got time. Mm. So it's a couple <laughs> weeks from now. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing to me? How but much film do you have in your camera? Oh my gosh. And I didn't set out to shoot a documentary. Right. I just was you were like- just covering what you were doing, right? I, the process. Well, well, initially when he said, help me do this set, I just thought in my head, okay, I'll write him a ton of jokes. And I'll get him some stage time and somewhere. See what he does with it. Yeah, and he can and invite his friends is, and, and family. He's done and then, it. And yeah, and I go, I, I have a little camera. Why don't I just record your set so your kids have it? He has four kids, and that way your family can have it mm, forever. My goodness. And then be this great memory of them to remember you and you're doing your dream. Yeah, the my life movie, of course. Yeah, yeah. and um, that's how it started. And then um, I go, do you want to record like a message to your children and to your family? Oh no, and, it's getting there. Yeah. And then so it was like okay, we'll record that. But then that <clears throat> that ended up being us talking about his condition and, and why he was made this decision. And then he shared with me the death with, so it became this big thing. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. Now I, I can't believe that I'm doing all of this. And now- I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. But then I was like, this is so inspiring for other people because what you're doing with the level of suffering and pain that you have is wanting, he's wanting to kind of heal his family. And that brought me back to when I was a kid and I was seeing that healing happen, oh. you know? And I'm mm. like, oh my gosh, the pain <clears throat> that they're going through with y you're dying either way, it's just a timeline, but you want to leave them laughing and give hope to other people with PLS and ALS that, you know, you can still do stuff. You you can still make people laugh. You can still heal. I mean, like what you're doing is healing others and sharing stories and being inspirational. It's so commendable. So I was like, I'm in. I what what can I do? Um, but I only had like two weeks to write his set. So I wrote like around 80 jokes for him, and then I I put them on a list. I typed them out, and I grabbed all of my close friends. Just phenomenal writers like uh, Brian Kiley, Alonzo Bowden, Becky Pettigo, like uh, Karen Rontowski. Like I got 10 comics. I was like, let's go, you guys. Here's this list. I need you to help me. So we had two writers rooms. And so like just like on a show, we were just Holy doing. Holy cow. Um, and Michael was awesome because he's like, I want you to go to town. I want no holds barred. Just just make fun of Content every part wise, of the, like yeah. do anything yeah he That's like had shitting his pants jokes he had uh, sex jokes don't he hold back yeah he's like and i loved this it this is my shot let's let's Good do it for that guy yeah. i loved it because if the disease and the tragedy is <clears throat> so hard i think the comedy has to be just as hard yes, you're, if you're gonna you, fight fire yes exactly yeah. and i think some people were a little shocked and um and like his family had never heard him speak like that. I'm like, you haven't heard the word cock? <laughs> it's like at my dinner table. <laughs> this is the guy he always wanted to be. Right? <laughs> yeah. right. You know what and I mean? The, the, yeah. The full confidence, no holds barred. Yes, exactly. And um, I mean, the jokes that we wrote for him were just, he was laughing and he's like, oh my gosh, I can't, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and we got him up on stage and he did it. Awesome. Yeah, he did a 15 minute set. <sighs> And he couldn't even memorize. His first time. Uh, first time on stage. Well, you did a couple of run throughs. We did places. one in where he did. We went to a bar just so he could see what it was like to get audience response. Because, you know, as a first timer, you don't know to pause. So I needed him to um, figure you out. Breathing room for the uh, yeah. laughing room. Yeah. Okay. And the pacing is so important. So um, I but got him But he was a fan of comedy. Did he already have a little bit of that and just- well, You think, you have, you you have think calm, so, but you don't know that. Calm down the nerves, okay. You don't know that. Gotcha. Um, because once you're up there, when you're watching it, it looks easy. It's just like driving. But then once you get behind the wheel, you're like, oh, what's this? And there's people coming over there and now I got to look at this. Well, it, I'm bringing up the math again. Somebody like me who's been a fan of comedy always, I've got all those pieces. I just don't, and I've been on stage, you know what I mean? So I know I know what it's all like. I just don't think that I'd be good at it, so that's my own thing. I didn't know if he had any, if he's been a fan of comedy and always wanted to do this, I didn't know if he did any of that work, any of that pre-building stuff in his head. And some people, you know I, I mean? Know. Some people are Rupert Pupkin, where when you finally get him out of the basement, oh my gosh, they're actually really good at this job. Yeah, he was really good, but I think that the, one of the number one things is they rush. Because right. even when I, if I get nervous, I'm like, through the through the whole thing or I'll not have the confidence to deliver something that I feel like is a little edgier um, and like his first 
that's where we discovered at the bar. Well, I'll backtrack. When we went to this bar, he, um, so I thought, okay, he's in a wheelchair, so I have to put the mic, the stand and the mic, like all the way down, and I'll put it here. But because of his condition, he couldn't sit up straight. He had no control on his back, so he would lean way back. So then I tried to, but then sometimes he shakes with his condition. There was nowhere to put the right, mic. Right, you need a boom mic. Right. Yeah. And what, are you going to get that at a comedy club? I mean, you can't even Unless get... you bring your own. <laughs> you can't even get hot fries. I mean, come on. <laughs> anyway, anything from the right side <laughs> of the menu, right? So <laughs> as he's up there and he's struggling and he's holding his paper and that's shaking... I just grabbed the mic and I'm like, I'm going to be his mic stand. So mm-hmm. I sat on the stage with him, put the mic to his mouth, and that, that's how we determined that he would do it that way. And thank God we tried it because I had no idea that... Right, would have been a problem we, on the day. We would have had the lapel mic, but it's different when you're performing and you have a microphone in your face. There's just something with the delivery that's... It's completely different. You have the power. You, yeah. you have, you're able to yeah. do a technique and, it's, and it's get a close prop. to it. And, I mean, mm-hmm. you can there's so many different things you can do with it and um so i ended up sitting next to him and that was the best way because when he started to speed up i was like a mom i'm like just take the mic yes perfect perfect i was like stop slow down it's like uh and then you i know, put the mic back up there somebody's and got like, their hand on the wheel just kind of like, keeping you off the don't curb forget the tag. and then and then when people were laughing and applauding he wanted to go right into his next thing and I would just pull the mic down and he just knew let them enjoy it so as we were performing together um, it, it was the best. But you were teaching him all of that technique. Yeah, but you know, when you have two, three weeks, that's, I, I had to, being up there with them, I didn't want any of that light because that was his moment. I actually didn't want to go up there with them because I wanted him to just feel the whole, but when I asked him, I was like, okay, this, this happened. Do you, I, I'll love you. We'll do whatever we have to do to get you. Like, we'll get one of these types of microphone mm-hmm. stands. And he's like, no, 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 I want, you need to be next yeah. to me. And it was just more like a security for him. Yeah. And that if he messed up a joke or whatever, and I did, I kind of trained the audience when we did the set where I was like, because initially there was crying. His family was there, his kids. Incredibly emotional. Brothers. Must have been. Yeah, his parents. So the, there was a, the news station came out for it. Um, we got ABC News to cover it. And so there's like cameras and he had never experienced any of this stuff. And, you know, he was nervous. His family, when they were coming in, they were kind of crying because he's doing his dream. But then, you know, this is his final thing. So now we're emotional because we know what's coming next. Mm -hmm. So it was like, and so my friends were like, are you going to headline? And I go, "I, I can't. Like there's, it's I overwhelming. don't want everything you're worry saying. about my material. Yeah. Like yeah. I have to make sure he's comfortable and his family's comfortable. I'm strictly crew tonight. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I'm just gonna like I'll host, and thank God I hosted because the mic went out during my set. Oh, so I mean, here we have four or five camera shoot, and the mic's not working. You know, of course, at a comedy, that yeah. stuff just happens. So yeah. we're having to switch out the mic. Oh, I was going to change the battery tomorrow. Improv with yeah. the with the audience, <laughs> Every time. and had that happened with him or someone else, it would have thrown off. Like I don't care for me, you know. So then you'll turn it into something, but it, inexperience will turn it into a goddamn disaster. Exactly. Yeah. And then we're like, do we bring him up first? And do we, you know, he can't really close the show because we don't know how well right, it's so going to be the finisher but, oh yeah. my gosh it was like well good for you thanks it but was, so uh, so this thing went off and then and, and you you documented the whole show we did and and that is what's being formed into a documentary uh actually funny th- or is it more the behind the scenes of you and it's Tom- all it became um it went from let's document the set to everything else like the practices, how close to him I got, learning about his condition, seeing the pain that he was in. And then I was really struggling because he had chosen. Now, I didn't even know that um, death with dignity was legal in California, but it's been legalized since uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything, like nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I I thought you went to a hospital and they did it there. I think at your home, right? Yes. It's, yeah. 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 And so coming to terms with uh, the, the other part was like my faith and thinking, is this like, I, do I even agree with this? And not, no judgment. Sure. It's just for me what I choose that. And when you're looking at 
death is yeah. it's, it's a different perspective that you haven't had previously. Yeah. No matter your age. I don't care if you're 15 or 75. It really doesn't exactly. matter. Thanks for bringing up age again. Wow. I, and where are you in the scale again? <laughs> <laughs> Always got to bring it back to that. <laughs> no, but I mean that, like I said, we had a life reshuffle and that had to do with both Mrs. Ryan's uh, illnesses. And I had a scare too, where we thought I might not make it. And when you look, oh. when you look down the door or yeah. the tunnel or whatever you want to call right. it, you get a different perspective and yeah. it's not one you had previously. And I would imagine just from doing what you did, even though it wasn't you personally, you were so emotionally and, and, and whatever invested yeah. I feel like you probably got a taste of that is that what you're saying yeah it it was well and ultimately when you're dealing with someone's soul and the end of their life he eventually he asked me after the show he asked me to be there and for the goodbye yeah mm-hmm. for for him watching him and mm-hmm. I've never I, I I've never seen someone in front of me I've seen a body after sure sure a relative but I've never I've seen never watched someone either, take either. go away th- yeah and and I I, I was like what did what like I was gonna write comedy for you yeah I, you I, can't leave yeah and and now I love this man and I care for him and his family is beautiful plus I'm the only non-family person. So his family's looking at me like, what are you, what are you doing here? Were they? Like they? Kind of. Okay. And I honestly don't blame them. I would be the same way. I, like, who is this girl? You've known her for two months. Now you want her to be, this is a private family moment. Why do you want her here? And so. And they didn't understand. Not, well, because they didn't. That's a different personal journey. You know what I mean? The That's other, the stuff. It's and the other so thing is like, I, I wouldn't put it past them to question what was my motive. Am I trying to make money off of this? Am I trying to use Michael's death, his disease, to profit? You know, you're making this movie. He's going to be dead. And Is that really? But you never know. Like, you just, I, I actually... Talking to you for 45 minutes, that I don't get that off of you. That's not what you do. That's no, not what you put out No, in fact, I'm in so much debt from all out of my pocket coming you know putting money into hiring my friends yeah, and yeah. and you know but it's because i believed in it so sure. much it's it's not something it's not about money it's about someone's life right life and death and what they're leaving behind it was a gift so what know? where are where are we in the process now so um i have probably about 10 more interviews to do oh, okay uh, like so I we're want... still collect we're still uh massing. yeah but yeah. i have a short put together that we're just um shopping at festivals right now and um just to trying get the story to... out there yes to see i mean hopefully we'll get some notoriety and awards and then um uh, I would love to sell it to a streaming network. Like, because it has content. You know, it's not clean. It's not an ABC family thing. It's definitely an HBO, Netflix yeah. sort of genre. And it's actually more of a series because <clears throat> all the content that we have, we have like at least 17 hours of content. That's a lot. Because there was interviews with him. I did the interview right before you know, his last days as well. So you see his progression. I, I have a couple family members. I have his doctor. Um, but I want to interview more people. Like there's a neurologist. I, I need to talk to a neurologist because his doctor wasn't a specialist at ALS, PLS. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and Just I want to get, get all that stuff on the record so that we have it, so and that I, the story's told. Yes. Clearly. And I, the death with dignity part to me is very interesting as well because he was attacked That's- by some people. That, like yeah that that's so that'll be covered as well yeah you and know, but i want to cover it from every different per, like an atheist a christian a, a jewish muslim per, you know anybody like why would you choose this or wouldn't you choose this and let's just have an open discussion so we can so is it more about another. him and his choices and his decisions as he was battling this issue or is it about more about <clears> him I, overcoming this lifelong dream of oh I've always wanted to do that or it's kind of it sounds like it's maybe going to be both or a lot of things it's it's so many things it's okay. not just one that's the crazy thing is I thought you know oh it's a comedy based thing and this sure. guy's dream and it became it's it's almost like a a love story where um not him and I falling in love but falling in love is humans if yes. that makes any sense like, the human connection of yeah course. it's the human connection it doesn't matter about 
what your decision is, but when you come to death, your perspective on everything is so different. And that he opened my eyes to see that life is so much deeper and more intense because of what you guys have gone through too. I don't know what your story is, but coming near death is, is if it doesn't matter what your story is, if you've ever had to look at it, right there's a ch- good chance you might change or at the very least you have a different perspective. It's the fucking Christmas Carol. It, that's all it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same story that's been told forever, forever, forever. But once you see your grave lying there with your name on the tombstone, mm-hmm. your perspective changes. That's why that movie's so good. That's why the story lives on. That's why there's 50 million tellings of it and every different version. If you're lucky enough to survive it, you're, it's a gift actually. Because you you're a, a better person. Ag- agreed. I am. Yeah. She yeah. is, yeah. without a doubt. Right. Uh, were you a Gary Shandling fan? Was he uh, important to you in any yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very, very important to me for reasons oh. I can't even really explain. Um, and he had a, an issue, you know, a situation a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. And you're probably familiar with that mm-hmm. as well. And he looked, looked death in the face and maybe even had a conversation yeah. with it. Um, and took that um, to do everything that we know about Gary Shandling. Right. You know, all of that stuff happened before he was famous for the reasons we know him. He was a writer on Sanford and Son or something. Yeah. So I do think that um, sometimes that perspective is needed. Yeah. For me, it was needed. Yeah. I don't think I was a sh- total shithead before, but I definitely needed the perspective. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it gives weight to everything that you do and say. It gives purpose, and, right? And the I time mean, you spend on things. Oh, all of a sudden, time is, imp- is precious. Words are important. All of those yeah, things. Yeah. And it's funny because I have a little bit of judgment on even the stuff that I've been submitting, just putting out there on the documentary because you know, people are like, well, you know, you do have to use that kind of language. And I'm like, I'm not going to screen him or anybody. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing about material. It's intent. What is your intention? Yeah. No matter what, with what you're saying, what's Agreed. your intent? Is your intent to hurt someone? Then that's offensive, no matter what the word that's is. That's the problem. Yes. Not th- whatever else it, it, people make it. There are two facets. I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I fully agree with mm-hmm. that. And then I also expand it back even further and go one step backward to the motivation that incites that intention. Yeah. That's when I find that you find out what the hell the person's made of. Right. Because having a good intention is really nice. Like, I could start a charity with a really good intention. But what's my motivation Mm. to start that charity? Is it to help the people? Or is it so I can make money from so-and-so over there who has a charity? You know what I mean? Like, it all depends. Right. Motivations and intentions, to me, are what the world revolves around. And communication is simply supposed to be a a, a wadded-up ball of those intentions and motivations. Mm -hmm. And we fling them back and forth at each other, right? Yeah. These days, they have no meaning. And the funny thing is, I feel like uh, comics that are super clean are so dark on the inside. I, I well, started they are. off. Yeah. I started Bill Cosby? Off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many people that uh, they get so e- easily offended. I'm like, what is it on the inside that's broken? Why are you so... What's it pulling out? Yeah. Well, that depends. And somebody like Norm MacDonald works clean and has whatever i don't know i'm I'm not gonna i'm not i'm not getting involved in that but uh i don't know that he gets offended but he he can be he can be biting very much clean is the cleanest perspective you don't have to use the f word to not be clean you know what i'm saying like it just um and then and then i are you talking more like high road comics uh or who won't even uh, um yes yeah i think like uh like brian regan's a perfect example he's totally clean he could work in a church Mm -hmm. but if you really listen to how biting yeah (laughs) it's like this dude is so much anger inside (laughs) and and i he's one of my favorite comics but someday right that's that's (laughs) the if you listen to what he's saying about how people are so stupid he's just saying it in a super nice jolly way that he's not using any f-bombs or anything but he is making fun of stupidity and this and whatever and it's He's getting through his day is what he's yeah, doing, I feel. But I just do it a little spicier, you know? And so that it I just feel like I don't want I don't wanna be limited but if but I'm always checking, am I intending to hurt someone when I say that? Am I intending to put myself on another level or make myself more important when but I say that? If you're checking that? in with yourself constantly, then you're keeping that higher perspective. You're keeping the zoom out. So you're good. You'll always be good as long as you keep doing that. Okay. It's like the person who uh uh uh, uh what do they always say? If you think you're crazy, you're not crazy. Like if you keep checking, boy, what's that? I don't know. Then you're not 
crazy likelihood. You know, this is if you age question old, age yourself thing. about sanity, so this was an age old psychiatry sanity. thing from like the eighties. I remember learning, but then if you think you're crazy, you're probably not. That's <laughs> <laughs> so like because you're I'm looking. Sane. I'm sane. I'm <laughs> sane. <laughs> what I took from that was, oh, if you're looking at it, yeah, then you're not in trouble as long as you keep looking at it. Don't yeah. stop looking at it. Don't don't ever think, oh, I'm fine. I'm just fine. Yeah. You're bro- you're broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello, Trump. It's all you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a- yeah. I know. And so that's why my material is going more that way. Yeah. Is just I need to point out these things, but usually what I try to do is put myself in that perspective and that people get really uncomfortable and I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> Discomfort's amazing, isn't it? I know. Especially when you're comfortable know, there. Every time take... you kept trying to do it to me, and I'm like, more, more, more. It's good. What are you trying? I was so successful. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm still bleeding. Uh, all right, let's see. Social media. Yeah. Believe it or not, we're wrapping it up. We've no been talking way. for a long time. I know. Oh, my gosh. Um, all about the wheelchair guy. My goodness gracious. <laughs> oh. What's going on with that? When Bummer. is that? Is there a, a, like, what's the next What's the next step with that? How can we help you? Well, there is a GoFundMe um, that is if people want to yes. donate, that it would be tell, great. Tell people about I it. mean, um, here, you know what? Let's do the billboard right now. <laughs> That's what you look like. Now you're being. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so t- go ahead, tell anybody where to find you on social media or dates oh, or anything you want to talk all about. All right. Lisa Alvarado, comedian on Instagram, uh, lisaalvarado.com for tour dates and booking information and pay me well um and uh yeah i I, on any of those you can find the gofundme beautiful i like it how was that yeah great you're (laughs) rad for doing that that's all i thought that everything you said Uh, i think you're rad mrs ryan thanks i think you're rad lisa I think you guys Lisa are Alvarado. Yeah, now that you know what to make of us, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> first got here. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't look in people's bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, they got cameras in their bedrooms. She's I asked Pretty for water. Cool. She gave that me another coffee. Really this whole thing is weird, weird, cool. weird. Yeah, no, I was like, thanks for coffee. I don't know. Oh, and it was water. It was just so mug. Talk show mug. <laughs> so what happened with you? We can't talk. We're still on the air here. Oh, we are? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't want to share your stuff on your show? Okay. No, no, no. They all know. They are, they, everybody's sick of hearing about me. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but thank you so much for being here. I yes. hope you enjoyed it. I hope yeah. you enjoyed the experience. Okay. I loved it. Did you? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. You're just saying that for Not the really. No, I didn't think that. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Ryan, what do we have tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow Tomorrow's Magnus Walker's back. One. Yeah, Magnus Walker will be back here. Uh, and then Friday Breakfast Club. So yeah. tomorrow... Tune in, Breakfast Club, uh, Friday. Yeah. I love you, Mrs. Ryan. We love you so much, Lisa Alvarado. Oh, I love the Ryans. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we love everybody at home. Please love one another, and we will see you tomorrow with Magnus Walker.